These are the Hansons, a very special family. This is Emma. So how is your pa? He's, he's, he's two feet one. And Carlton. <laughs> Being a family has been especially challenging. This is Vernon. Vernon has lived with the Hansons for two years. I know, Muggsy Buzz. This is Nathan. His mother was killed three years ago, and he's lived with the Hansons since that time. <laughs> this is a unique family, a foster family, part of the child welfare system that is working to protect children and strengthen families who have never needed them more. At the turn of the century, children who needed care lived in a simpler society. Large extended families often took care of children when parents couldn't. This was especially true for families of color. Children without relatives often roamed the streets. Hundreds of thousands were selected to ride the orphan trains to farms, where many worked long hours for room and board. Early cases of child abuse came under the jurisdiction of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. No organization existed to prevent cruelty to children. In 1930, the White House Conference on Children and Youth pronounced foster care an inalienable right for all homeless children. A children's charter proclaimed that every child is entitled to a home and that love and security which a home provides. But today, the child welfare system is challenged as never before. The foster care system alone serves about 800,000 children in the course of a year and tries to respond to the problems of an increasingly complex society. 17% of our children live in poverty. One million are homeless at some time during each year. Studies indicate that up to 80% of children in the child welfare system have mental health issues requiring intervention. Substance abuse devastates the lives of hundreds of thousands of children and their families each year. Substance abuse is associated with the placement of at least half of the children in the custody of child welfare. And children whose parents abuse drugs or alcohol are three times more likely to be abused and four times more likely to suffer from neglect. Of the children who die each year, over 75% are under age four. More than 1,000 children under the age of 18 die every year. In recent years, over 900,000 children annually have been victims of neglect or abuse. There are over 100,000 children in family foster care who are waiting to be adopted. The child welfare system is mandated to serve at-risk children and their families. When children and parents must be separated because of the tragedy of abuse, neglect, or special medical circumstances, Hundreds of thousands of foster parents, adoptive parents, and social workers are there to help. This is a big job, and it's important to have the skills and the knowledge you need so you can make an informed decision on whether or not it's right for you. You need to understand what to expect from youngsters at different ages, what their life experiences may have been, and what kinds of behaviors you may have to work with. What it means to work with birth parents and the impact a new child may have on your children and other members of your family. Then you have to realize what it's like to be separated from children who've become part of your family. Or if you're considering adoption, what it means to be making a lifetime commitment to a child. Uh, we've had great support from the agency right from the start. And now we're involved in helping train new foster parents and adoptive parents. Now, Emma's father has been, always been there to help us, too. It's been good for the kids to have more family to be close to. And he understands how to give the kids a strong sense of their own culture. Children need to know something about their, their roots to have a healthy sense of who they are. We understand that we're part of a team of child welfare professionals, caseworkers, therapists, the legal system, medical personnel, teachers, children, and families and that we all need to work together for the good of the children. Vernon. A neighbor or teacher may be the first to call attention to a child that needs help 
and to set into motion a team of child welfare professionals. Are you sick, champ? I'm taking a nap. It feels as if you have a fever, Vernon. Is your mother home? He said I have to come to school. She won't have time to be a nurse. Well, we need to find out what your temperature is. An examination by a school nurse reveals a fever and burns on Vernon's arms. Vernon's teacher has an obligation under the law to report suspected abuse. The children's services. Yes. Is uh, Trisha Walker in? Thank you. Oh, hi, Trisha. This is Jim Royce at King Elementary. You asked me to keep in touch with regard to Vernon Davis. thinks they may be cigarette burns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just a second. Vernon! Vernon! Hold on, Trisha. agency has made efforts to work with this family to help Mrs. Davis with her drug problem and to keep Vernon safe. But their problems are serious and Vernon is at risk again. Mrs. Davis? Stop that! People sleeping in here. Mrs. Davis? Can't you hear? I said stop! It's me, Trisha Walker. I need to talk to you. Most parents want to be good parents, but their problems may be too overwhelming. Hello, Mrs. Davis. What you want? This is Frank Ficata, a child protection worker from my office. I said we're sleeping in here. May we come in? It's very important that we talk with you. I'm sorry if this is a bad time. Leave him alone, he's sleeping. I got a call from the school today, Mrs. Davis, and I have some concerns. So I wanted to come by and see how you and Vernon are doing. I know you're having some difficult times now, and. I know you care about Vernon, but it's our job to see that he's safe. The teacher said he was sick in school again today, and he may have some burns on his arms. Before I left, I checked, and I understand you've missed several of your meetings at the drug program this week. I think we need to take him in for a medical evaluation. What you talking about? I know this must be very difficult for you, but we have an obligation to keep Vernon safe. After we make an evaluation, we get to determine the best plan for Vernon and for you. The state already had legal custody of Vernon because of prior incidents. Mrs. Davis had maintained physical custody with supervision and a structured program that she was to follow. But she just had too many problems to follow through with it. Child abuse and neglect is a tragedy. And when it can't be prevented through services to the child and his family in their own home, the child welfare system looks to foster care to keep that child safe. Vernon? Dinner time. Vernon. Hey, hungry bitch, leave me alone. I know this must be hard for you, Vernon. You don't want to be here. And you probably miss your mama too, huh? The whole thing is confusing and scary. But there are people that are trying to help her and we want to help you to be safe. I promise you, nobody's going to hurt you here. Vernon was awfully upset when he came to us. Even when they've been abused or neglected, 
Kids don't want to be separated from their parents. Life in their birth family is the only life that they know. His mother just hadn't been able to get off the drugs. And it turned out that he was being abused by his mother's boyfriends. His father was drinking too much, I guess, and got involved with another woman, including her children and the baby that they had together. This woman just didn't want anything to do with Vernon. Finally, the caseworker helped Mr. Davis to understand that if he wasn't going to be a parent to Vernon, Vernon needed another parent. Then there was Nathan. Uh, he was such a sad little fellow when he came to us. His mama was shot on the street by someone in a car when she was coming home from work. The police said they were probably aiming for somebody else. They never did find out who did it. You know, that's my mom, favorite one. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna like it here. Probably like the garden at our house better. Maybe. But we won't be able to tell right away. Might look pretty sad for a while because we moved it, and that's a shock. Leaves might droop some, might lose a few bugs, but if we feed it and water it and take good care of it, I'll bet it'll learn to be happy here, too. You want to help me? I guess so. Good. His daddy took it real hard and pretty much gave up on life for a while. He started drinking and lost his job. Nathan started getting in trouble. It's taken his father quite a while to get back together. But uh, he's looking really good these days, and it looks like Nathan will be going home soon. This isn't the same as raising your own children. These are somebody else's children. Most of them have had terrible things happen to them. They're in so much emotional pain, sometimes physical pain, too. It can be hard work, and it takes a real commitment to protect them and nurture them no matter how hard